Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. For this week's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of tech work on this Mexican made Strat. We are gonna be replacing this six screw trim system. So a while back, I did a trim comparison between a bunch of mid-range offerings from popular guitar manufacturers like uh, GNL, like PRS SE, like Sterling by Music Man, uh, Squire and Fender and the Fender's six screw trim kind of came out on the bottom of the pile. Now I love my Mexican made Strat, one of my favorites. I think it sounds good, it plays good. I love everything about it, but the trim system. So today we're gonna remedy that. So here's what we're gonna be using to replace the old six screw system on our Mexican Strat. This is the Railtail by Floyd Rose. And the idea behind this is it's not a floating bridge. It's designed to be sucked up against and sit right on top of your guitar body. And instead of pivoting on six individual screws, it's got a giant rail that gets bolted to the guitar body and then the whole thing sits on the guitar body. Um, so the idea is a bunch of sustain and added tone because it's machined out of solid brass, which is a definite upgrade over the Mexican system. And then of course you got a pop in arm that stays where you want it to and stuff like that. So um, you can also bend and do double stops without uh, putting additional strings out of tune, like a, a tram that might bend forward. This one does not do that. So the idea is it's the best of both worlds. It's the best of a fixed bridge uh, with the uh, ability to kind of dive bomb and use your tram uh, without it going out of tune. All right, you guys, let's unbox this thing and see what we got in the package. So we've chosen the narrow spacing, hopefully you guys can see that, for our Mexican guitar, and of course a chrome finish to go along with. Set that aside and see what we got. All right, we got our instructions. Now here is the bridge itself. Ooh, that is heavy weight. Okay. Yeah, this thing's super heavy duty. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. But yeah, everything looks, you know, incredibly well built. The saddles themselves are pretty cool. They've got uh, kind of roller edges on them. So the string can kind of uh, pivot on those rollers. Hopefully that's not getting overexposed. But anyway, yeah, each saddle has a little roller. So that should be great. And then of course, a spot for your pop and arm. So let's set that aside for the time being. And we've got our bar, which is held in how. No, let's pull it out. Nice, heavy duty, solid bar. And what's underneath? Ah, hardware, okay, so they give us uh, some springs. And oh, another claw too. And the rail, okay, cool. So anyway, we'll open all that up when we install. And a few extra things, looks like a template as well. Cool. All right, step one is removing our guitar strings and we've got our handy dandy roadie guitar tuner, which is very cool. Makes the job a snap and it tunes up all your instruments, alternate tunings, banjo, mandolin, whatever you got. Makes it very, very easy. So my students really love this thing too, just because it's really fun to use. All right, the tension's off, so we're just gonna cut the strings here and start working on the other end. All right, let's flip the guitar around and start installing. Next up, let's remove the back cavity cover. Next up, let's remove the trim springs. And we can set those aside because we get new springs with the Floyd Rose kit. The final step for uninstalling the original trim is to simply remove the six screws. Now the old trim can simply be removed from the guitar. All right, so now we're getting onto the fun stuff. We get to install the rail portion of the rail tail. And that looks something like this. Hopefully the camera will get that. There we go. So yeah, this beefy rail basically re replaces your six screws and the whole trim kind of rotates around, uh, yeah, this incredibly solid, well-machined rail. So that sits like this. And basically we use the existing holes, so no modifications required at all to the guitar, which is always appreciated, right? No extra screwing, nothing. So you just use four of the existing six uh, screw holes and we just attach it. So they recommend leaving the rail a little bit loose. 
so it can slide back and forth so you can center your trim. So we'll slap that on there. Oh, that's a professional piece of kit. Look at that. So I think we can just center it in the pick guard and once it's centered, pop the trim out, tighten up the, the rail and away we go. Now let's double check it's centered. That looks pretty good. Next up is removing the saddles, which I have done already, and then loosening up the trem block attachment screws so that it can the, the trem block itself can slide forward and backward because um, the idea is you want to slide it as far forward as you can to maximize the travel when you're using the trem, like that. So that's what we're going to do. Let's loosen these guys off. Cool, the next step is to lock in the trim block as far forward as possible, which will give you more room when you go to use the trim. So with this particular uh, cutout in the cavity, I can, I can move the trim block as far forward as possible and it won't contact. Now, they do include a spacer on the kit in case you know your cavity is cut out a little bit different depending on your model. Um, but you know, with this one, I can move it as far forward as possible and I still have space. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over and lock this trim block in the farthest position uh, towards the neck. All right, so we've got our trim block tightened back up into the main top plate, and they even give you uh, lines kind of scribed on the bottom so that you can make sure your trim block is perfectly lined up. So I don't know if those will show up in the camera. I'll try to get them, but anyway, these lines right along here. So you can just ensure that that trim block is sitting perfectly straight. That's a nice touch. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. We've got the saddles back installed and everything's looking great. So what we need to do is use the included lube on the kit and basically uh, lube up the rail and also the inside, I'll try to show it here. Yeah, the inside of the rail um, cavity here. So we're gonna take our lube and just, uh, yeah, anyway, there we go, get it all over there and all over the rail. And this will ensure that everything, because the surface area where the, the bridge and the rail are mated, um, there's just so much surface area that, uh, yeah, they recommend putting on a ton of lube to keep everything working smooth and, uh, yeah, without any hiccups. All right, as one of the final steps, let's put on the new trim springs. Installing a piece of foam underneath the springs is a great way to kind of deaden the spring sound as well. So I think we'll do that. All right, let's give it a quick test run before we put the strings back on. So it's just a pop in bar, very nice. There we go, okay. Very cool. So as we put the tension of the, the strings on, we need to make sure that this doesn't lift off the body because it's designed, like I said before, to really, really just put a lot of tension from all, you know, all the energy from the, stri the strings um, back into the body. So we'll have to watch that as well, but nice and smooth. All right, let's put some strings on this baby. Now I've shown you guys this before in other videos, but when you are stringing up your instrument and you do not have locking tuners, it's a good idea to lock the string in. So what you do is you take uh, this extra length of string after going through the tuning machine, you tuck it underneath the main portion of the string and pull it tight, okay? And once it's underneath and pulled tight, then you just fold it over like this, okay? And that will lock that portion of the string in as you tune it up. So it's a great tip, um, especially if you plan on using your trim uh, to keep all your strings locked tight. All right, now let's give it the final tune up here. All right, you guys, we are back. Installation is complete. So I've set up the saddle height, I've set up the intonation, and all that's left is to try it out. So this is what it looks like. Sits right flat up against the body. Try to get a couple angles here for you guys. Really, really cool looking. Um, and like I said, it's supposed to be the best of both worlds. So let's do some playing and try this thing out.
All right, you guys, one of the huge advantages to a system like this is when you're doing your double stops, it doesn't put your strings out of tune. So I can play my high E string here and bend up my third string. And no matter what I do, that first string note is gonna stay in tune. Now when I try the same thing to a strap that doesn't have the trem decked, something like this, when I do that same lick, can you hear that first string? As I bend my third string up, the tuning on the first string changes because the whole end of the trem leans forward. So that's one of the big advantages of having your trem decked. So some final thoughts on the trim upgrade. First of all, the thing's built like a beast. It's super heavy, well machined. It's got the roller saddles, which I like. Um, the bar is really thick and secure. There's no, you know, wiggle room in the trim at all, which, you know, does drive me nuts about fender. And I know you can put Teflon tape around the threads. I know you can use the springs, but when your guitar's in and out of its case constantly, that just isn't realistic. Until Fender, you know, designs a case where you can keep the trim arm on, something like Music Man does. <laughs> you know, those solutions are great if your, your guitar just sits on the wall, but when it's in and out of its case and you have to take the trim arm in and out, uh, those solutions are not ideal. Um, so something like this is so much better. You just pop the arm out, put it in, and it's 100% secure 100% of the time. So that's, you know, something that's amazing. Sustain, anecdotally, is much better. I wish I could have used the same set of strings so I could have done a sustain test, but this guitar does not have locking tuners, so I had to put a fresh set of strings on, and that would have totally skewed the results. Um, but just from me playing around, this thing sounds better and has better sustain, um, you know, which is understandable when you upgrade from cheap parts to, you know, well-made American parts. So that's really cool. And tuning so far, I mean, I need to break my strings in, but it seems great. So overall, I'm really happy with the upgrade. Thanks for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed this little upgrade video for our Mexican Strat. Stick around the channel. We'll see you guys next week with a new video. Take care.